Welcome to another episode of When You Understand. To kick things off, here are the answers to last week's twists. Did you figure them out? If you didn't watch last week's episode or don't particularly care about the answers, feel free to skip ahead to this week's stories. I've added chapter breaks to the video. But before then, let's check the answers. First, four messages. A man receives four messages. First is from his mother, letting him know that his sister has given birth, and he hopes he can go and visit them soon. Next is from Dad, who wants to know if he'll be back on Sunday, to which he says probably not, because he's busy with work. Then a third message comes in from a friend, who wants to know why he's not picking up the phone, to which he replies, he's sick and can't. The fourth message is from someone coming to see him with a cake. With this message, he decides he'll clean up tomorrow, and now it might be a while until he can see his sister and her baby. So what's going on here? This one's a little difficult, but the key lies in how he describes who sends the messages. For the first message, he says, my mother. That's from his actual mother. For the second, he only says, dad. And for the third, a friend. Not my dad and my friend. Just a. He doesn't describe any relationship at all for the fourth. So what's happening? His older sister has given birth to a child, and at first he claims he'll visit her the following day. But then we get more of a picture of what's going on from the next two messages. He tells the dad that he's busy with work and can't see him. He tells the friend he's ill and can't answer the phone. Why? Because he's pretending to be someone he's not. Who? The person he has just killed. And how do we know that? The last message is from someone claiming they'll bring a cake over, to which the narrator says he'll do all the cleaning tomorrow. Clean what? Presumably the mess he made killing the first person and now this other person coming to see him. Second, the warning message. A man is using the internet when he suddenly gets an email warning him that as soon as he's alone, he's going to die. His girlfriend then tells him that she's going to the convenience store, which will leave him alone in the house. He panics, but he doesn't want to seem like a coward, so he just says goodbye. Two hours pass and he's still alive, so he thinks the email must have been fake after all. What's going on here? The email said, you are going to die when you're alone. The narrator thought it was directed at him, so when his girlfriend said she was going to the store, he got scared but ignored it. But two hours later, he's perfectly fine. And still alone. Meaning, his girlfriend hasn't returned from the store yet. The message wasn't directed at him. It was directed at his girlfriend, who just went out alone to go to the store. So, how did you fare with these ones? Did you manage to guess both answers? Let me know how you did in the comments below. And now, without further ado, let's head into this week's first story. This one's called The Scary Car. I just saw a really scary car. It was a black van covered in smoke, and despite the fact it was the middle of the night, the van turned all its lights off and looked like it was trying to mess with the driver in front of it. Not only that, but it was so close that it was almost making contact with the car and, of course, the driver noticed this and sped up. Or rather, they got the hell out of there. It was dark, but looking in the rearview mirror, the driver looked like a woman, maybe. At any rate, the car fled all the way to the police station, so I guess it was okay in the end. So what do you guys think really happened here? Let me know in the comments below. And we have one more story for you this week. This one's called Why They Died. A gatekeeper stood before the gates to heaven. Three men, A, B, and C, arrived. The gatekeeper asked A, How did you die? And so A answered. 
I returned home after work and found my apartment was a mess and my wife had been murdered in the back room. When I looked over at the veranda, a man I'd never seen before was holding onto it and trying to get into the apartment. I thought he was the murderer, so half crazed, I lifted the chest of drawers next to me and hit the man with them. Both the man and the chest of drawers fell over the edge of the veranda and he died. After that, I was in so much shock that my wife was dead that I died as well. The gatekeeper then asked B, and how did you die? I was sleeping on top of an apartment building when I fell. However, by some miracle, I landed on the veranda of an apartment, and when I was trying to climb over, a furious man threw a chest of drawers at me. I fell alongside the chest and died. The gatekeeper then turned to see. And how did you die? I was inside the chest of drawers. So what do you think really happened in this week's stories? Leave your answers in the comments below and then tune in again next week to find out. Until then, stay safe guys and I'll see you again next time.